Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. I'm using some new products from our Simply Spring release. This is the Daisy Layers bouquet. Big, big fan of this. And then the um, Big Time Kindness Sentiments. I also showed you the Daisy Field um, 3D embossing folder. I didn't end up using it, but I'll show you what it would have looked like. Um, so today we're going to be talking about like the easiest way to watercolor white flowers. Um, so I'm working on Canson Montebal watercolor paper, I treated that with my anti-static tool, and then I'm going to be stamping down the largest daisy bouquet using the Brilliant White pigment ink from Honeybee. And um, you don't have to stamp in white. I just prefer it. I feel like it gives me a more solid white when I'm heat embossing. Um, but that is my first tip for any sort of kind of easy watercoloring would be to do some embossing. The embossing just maintains your lines, um, which a, a black ink would do as well. This is just a little bit of a softer look. Plus the embossing kind of creates little wells for your pigment to sit into. So you don't have to go petal by petal or leaf by leaf because the water is kind of corralled, <laughs> if you will, by the embossing lines. So I just use some white detail embossing powder. I'm heat setting that until it is smooth. And then we are going to go right into the watercoloring. I'm using Hero Arts liquid watercolors today. Um, this is kind of a palette that of the liquid watercolors that I have already been using. And you don't need fresh ink. These will reconstitute with water. And in fact, I put no additional water in them or any additional ink. This is just my dry palette because when you're doing white flowers, you're just adding in the shadows. So here what I'm doing is I've just picked a flower. I know that it's hard to see because it's white on white, but as we add the color, it'll be easier to see on screen. Um, but so I'm just adding white into one flower. And now I'm just going to go in and at the very base of the petals, I'm going to add a little bit of ink. Now I am using, um, well, watercolor paint, I guess, not ink. Um, but I am using a combination of blues and purples to put my shadows in. But when you are coloring something white and you're just laying down the shadows, oftentimes we think to just use grays, which is totally fine. You can absolutely use grays. But you can also use other colors that would be reflected around it. So I had in my mind the way that this was going to look was that I was going to have like a purplish blue um, or like a periwinkle background. So that's how I chose the color for my shadows. But if you wanted to put this say in a green background, you could use greens. If you wanted to, um, you know, put this on a pink background, you could certainly use pinks. I would just err more on the side of desaturated colors. So just not as bright um, so that they looked like shadows. And you're going to add the shadows at the base of the petals and then anywhere one petal is on top of another. So like where it would be coming out from behind. You want to work like just a little bit of color at a time. Watercolors do dry back considerably to be a lot lighter. And actually looking at this in hindsight, I kind of wish I would have went a little bit darker. Um, but in real life, you can definitely see their shadows. It was just an absolute nightmare to photograph. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for most of us, that isn't, you know, that isn't the goal is to be able to have nice photos of our card. We're going to give our card to somebody. Um, but for me, because this is my job, uh, having nice photos is super important. And so I just had a really hard time getting a good photograph of this because the shadows were so light. But now I've just moved on to my next flower. I'm doing the same thing. And again, I'm working with just a, I'm wetting the whole flower um, with just clean water. And then going in with my damp paintbrush, picking up a little bit of pigment from whichever well I'm working from. Um, this is actually, um, what is it? Deep ocean with a little bit of purple in it and um, mold wine. Those are the two colors that I'm working with um, in the watercolors. And the reason that I chose these is because they are more of a natural color. My Karen watercolors or my Zig watercolors are much brighter. It's not that you couldn't make that work to make them more desaturated. You could, but this was much easier. Um, 
So here now you can see me going back to that first flower. It's completely dry at this point. And this is another way that you can add color. If you uh, feel like your watercolor is a little bit out of control with putting down clean water first, you can go in and paint in the pigment in the darkest portion. And then you would just start at the edge of your petal with clean water and bring it into the pigment and then just kind of let it bloom out naturally. That's another technique that you can use. So whichever technique feels more comfortable to you, um, you can do. I am not working with a ton of water here. Like I am making sure the paper is wet, but it's not like bubbled up where my water is pouring over into the next flower. Um, it has a, a decent amount of water because I need the pigment to move. But for the most part, I'm working with really minimal water, which means they're drying very quickly. Um, so then we're just going to you know, continue on doing what we're doing. I am going to speed this up just because we're doing the same thing multiple times. But uh, I do like for you to be able to see the whole process because as I'm doing it, sometimes I am going back. Here, what you see me doing is I felt like my shadows were a little bit too dark. So I just went in with a damp paintbrush and used it to absorb the ink. So if you have a situation where you've put down too much water or you've put down too much pigment, you can go in with a clean paintbrush, absorb the ink, wipe it off. You'll see my little, you know, paper towel up there in the top corner, just barely. Um, wipe it off, go back in, absorb some more until you're happy with how much um, pigment or water is left on your paper. So like I said, adding in the shadows, I chose these colors because I knew um, in my mind what kind of, uh, like I had an idea in my head what color I was going to go with. And you'll see that's, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about um, in this video is options. So a lot of times, you know, you're seeing the finished product. You're not seeing the whole creation and all of the things that go with it because either it's been edited out or it hasn't been recorded. So I'm sure that sometimes as a viewer, it often feels like we know exactly what we're doing. This is our job. We're going in. There is no kind of back and forth or hemming and hawing about, you know, the way to do it. And that's not reality. We all, uh, whether we do this, you know, as a creator for a living or as a hobbyist, um, Sometimes you just have to look and see what your options are um, before you make a decision. So I'll be showing some of that process in this video today as well. Here, my bottom flowers are dry. So I'm going in um, and adding in a little bit of yellow to the centers. Um, you don't want to do the centers while the rest of your flower is wet because the majority of these centers are actually heat embossed. So it does have a tendency to sit on the top a little bit. So you don't want to, you know, have your yellow run out into your flowers unless you are shading with yellow and then it wouldn't matter. <laughs> then it wouldn't matter. Um, for the leaves and this kind of arrangement, I decided to go with more of a, a yellow green. So for the first time around, I did go in, fill in the leaves with clean water just so that they were wet and then drop in the pigment. Other times you'll see me put down the pigment first and then pull it out with the clean water. Um, like I said, either way is fine. I really just end up doing that a lot of the time because I already have the pigment on my brush and um, I don't want to waste it. I know this sounds so silly because watercolors last forever, uh, but it's just kind of the habit I've gotten into. And then with the green, I'm just adding in little bits of yellow um, just for some color variation. If you watch my videos, you know I do like a lot of color variation. And then anytime I think that maybe they aren't dark enough, I just go back in, add more pigment, uh, go in with clean water at the edges, and then kind of pull that back out. So um, that way I can kind of build up the shadows, at, especially at the base of the leaf. Um, but this is just because of the heat embossing, it makes it so much easier to paint um, because it just holds your lines. So you can still get a very soft look, like almost like a no line watercoloring look without having to go through the process of the no line. Um, because I know even for me, that is a struggle uh, to do in any sort of timely fashion. Like I have to have a lot of time to do a no line 
well, even coloring to do a no line look. Um, so I love the option to to use the heat embossing, um, especially with this because you're trying to leave the edges of your flower white. Right now, everything looks very like blue, purple, blue, violet, um, but that's just because there isn't any other color with it. Uh, so those shadows are super prominent, but as we start to assemble the card, they will kind of fall back and look um, more white than what they look right now. For the, there's like two different styles of leaves in this particular arrangement. So for the other one, I still wanted them to be green. I just wanted them to be um, another hue, like more on the blue side, just so that there was again, that variation of color, which makes bouquets more interesting. Uh, you know, there's a reason why florists, when they are making an arrangement, put together a variety of flowers and leaves. It, it just makes it more interesting to look at. Um, and so here I am using a combination of teal and green. Um, and you can add as much or as little as you would like. More, I, I guess I was more going for like a eucalyptus see type color. <laughs> I guess you could call it that. So, um, but the process is the same. No matter what I am, am coloring, the process is the same as putting down either clean water and then the pigment or putting down the pigment and then going in with clean water to pull it out. Um, I don't typically vary from either one of those techniques and I have a tendency to use both of them just because, like I said, it keeps me from having to wash off my pigment when it's already on my brush. So the last little piece that I need to do is fill in that yellow at the top for that flower that was wet before. And then I did go in and color in some of the um, pieces in between. So like the background pieces, um, I did go in and fill those in just to help the petals kind of come forward. There are some other areas that I'm going to have to go back in and fill in later after I do the die cutting, but I wasn't exactly sure what the die cut cut out of the bouquet. So I did my die cutting first. Um, so this is all completely dry. You want to make sure that it's dry before you die cut it um, with its coordinating die. And then now I can see here is it on green and you can see that that like those flowers don't really necessarily pop much better on blue and so originally I was going to go with a lighter blue we ended up switching to a darker blue you'll see why here in a second but now I'm going to go in now that I know what the die cut situation is um, I'm going to go in with some of the uh, middle pieces that are in between the flowers and just fill those in green as if there was greenery behind them Alternatively, you could fill it in as the same color as your cardstock that you're going to put behind it. Um, but this is just to create a little bit more uh, separation between the flowers and then also have those whites kind of pop. So now here I was looking at, do I want a lighter blue, um, you know, more on the aqua side? And I really didn't love that either. I kept coming back to this periwinkle color, which, like I said, is how I envisioned it in my head. Here is this embossing folder, which is beautiful. Um, it just, and this is just my particular style, it just felt a little bit too busy with this kind of softer style of flowers. I didn't love them together. So I just set that embossing to the side and I will use it for another one. So here, I don't love a white outline. This is just me. I'm trying to find a... Um, marker. This is actually the Olo marker. This is BB 2.3. And so I'm going to go in and color in my outline. Something to note, if you already know what color cardstock, you're like, I am married to this cardstock and this will be my background, then you can paint this in before you do your die cutting. But since I wasn't a hundred percent sure, I just decided um, that I would just go in and color it with a marker after the fact. And actually, I thought that I had a pretty good match, but it turned out that this was just a little bit darker than what I had thought. And I'll show you here in a second um, how they compare. 
So it's not totally off, but it is a little bit darker. So I actually ended up switching um, my cardstock to this one. So the first one that I showed you was a periwinkle. Um, this one is the uh, lapis um, from Hero Arts, and that was a much better match. For my sentiments, uh, these ones, these are this very similar to the... Um, miss you big time. And I love these because I love a large sentiment. <laughs> um, especially with this like font, it's so pretty. But again, I wasn't sure what was going to look best. So I stamped it in a similar uh, blue violet color that was, um, I think it's stonewash from Hero Arts in on white. And now I'm also going to heat emboss it on white on to another piece of the same color cardstock I'm using in the background. Um, and I'm just, I treated that with my anti-static tool. And this time I'm just stamping with my clear embossing ink from Honeybee, mostly because I didn't want to take the time to clean up the pigment ink. I'm going to be honest. Um, but I'm going to use that same uh, white detail embossing. And then um, once this is heat set, I will go in and um, die cut it with its coordinating die. So this way, I have two options for my sentiment so I can see which one I like and which one will look better in the finished result. Um, and all it cost me was one more stamping and one more die cutting. And then if whichever one I don't end up using, you could either use it to A, pop up your sentiment, just glue one behind the other, or you can put it with your stamp set and then just use it on another card in the future. I also took the time to die cut a couple more of the um, floral pieces so that I could stack that up. Um, so here I'm playing around and looking. I think both of them looked good. I liked the one that was white heat embossed a little bit better. I felt like it kind of popped off the page a little bit more. Um, and so that is the one that I went with. But honestly, I probably could have used either one and they would have looked pretty. So here, just gluing these all, all the pieces parts together um, so that I can, you know, assemble the card. <laughs> That's an, that is an important part of the card making process is the actual assembly. So I did trim down my background just a little bit so that I would have a white border um, to kind of bring in um, that white embossing, whether it's on the flowers or in the sentiment. It's just a nice little compliment. I'm super into matting my cards lately. I don't really know why, um, but it's just a little a little extra something something. Um, I think it was Kim recently asked in a comment, and I read it, but I didn't have uh, opportunity to respond to it. Um, she said, you know, you used to never use color cardstock. What changed? Um, and I think it's a little bit that my style has evolved, but I also think a lot of it is that the industry has changed. Because when I first started um, doing card making, you know, stamps were pretty much it. And so I found it very easy to kind of create my own um, colored cardstock. And I still do that with, you know, my distress inks and things like that. Uh, but die cutting was not as prevalent as it is now. Um, dies were not even a thing when I first started. Like, I mean, I think Spellbinders was the only one that was around and now it's everywhere. Um, so I think for me, that is what changed with like actually purchasing colored cardstock. Um, but I still do like make my own with, with distress inks and that for the most part um, still is my preferred way to do it. Uh, so for the sentiment, I just had to pop up, just give that D and friend a little bit of support with some foam so that everything was flush. And then um, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. This is the Ocean Waves Pearls, but they have some really, really pretty um, like periwinkle colored pearls. And so I went in and uh, added those to just accent the sentiment. I didn't put any shimmer on it because I didn't want to mess up my watercolor. Um, but yeah, that's that's the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Like I said, this is part of Honeybee's new release. So head over there and check it out. Lots of great stuff, including a lot of really good dyes. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate you and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.